Evening Rovers. I hope you are all enjoying our fresh food week as well as our National Gardening and Exercising Week. My name is Tammy Clark and I'm the Senior Nutrition Director here in Anne Arundel County for the Department of Aging and Disabilities. We are very excited to present some information from the United States Department of Agriculture and the National Institute of Health to you today. In the spirit of eating healthy, we are going to explore how to create some healthy diets, where to buy fresh food, and we're even going to learn a few healthy recipes. And I hope to see you all soon at one of our Fresh Food Fridays. Thank you for your time. Question, can the foods you eat actually affect your health as you get older? Gloria thinks so. When my cholesterol flipped and, you know, I started to have high blood pressure, then I knew it was either change my diet or get sicker. At 79, this retired registered nurse prepares most of her meals from scratch and uses lots of fresh ingredients and whole grains. I uh, make all my soups because I can control the fat and the salt and I'll use onion legumes, you know, I'll use the beans and the lentils. Richard, who is 64 and works from his home as an architectural renderer, follows a diet that includes lots of fruits and vegetables. In the summertime, like now, fruit is my favorite um, food. Um, so I eat probably more fruit than anything else. And I also like vegetables, both salads and steamed vegetables. He also knows that eating well can help him maintain his health as he gets older. I know that eating vegetables, mainly vegetables and fruit, um, uh, you'll just have fewer health problems. It's just a way of um, uh, protecting the body. It's true, many diseases that commonly occur with aging can be controlled or delayed through diet. Many of the most common and most serious chronic diseases that occur with aging are very amenable to dietary changes. This includes uh, diseases like cardiovascular disease, stroke, hypertension, diabetes. Uh, many of these disease processes can be delayed uh, and lessened by the right dietary interventions. When Gloria found out she had high cholesterol and high blood pressure, she changed her diet to help control these conditions. I changed my diet because I realized that the high blood pressure and not being under control and the cholesterol being high would jeopardize other organs in my body. For instance, the heart would be affected. And so I, in order to prevent that from happening, I, it was easier for me to change my diet. Probably needs a little more liquid. By preparing dishes like this chicken and vegetable soup from scratch, Gloria avoids the high levels of salt found in many canned soups. And controlling the salt helps with her high blood pressure. Sodium, 890 milligrams, and that's one of the reasons I make my own broth. Dr. Connie Bales advises older people to think about their specific health issues when planning their diets. For an individual who is uh, battling hypertension, who is salt sensitive, then salt becomes a very important concern for that individual. But for, let's say, a woman who has osteoporosis, salt may not be a very important concern. She's interested in making sure she has plenty of calcium and vitamin D in her diet. Maintaining a proper weight is often an issue for older adults. Richard notices that his weight is affected by his diet, so he keeps tabs on how much he eats. I love bread. I've always loved bread. I like making biscuits. And then I can eat them several times a day. I also weigh myself every morning. And when I eat a lot of biscuits, uh, I'll see that weight um, climbing up. Besides cutting back on the biscuits, Richard exercises and plays sports on a regular basis. Following a healthy diet and exercising regularly can help with weight control. Gloria, on the other hand, has to make sure that she consumes enough calories to maintain her weight. All my life, I've been underweight. After I turned 40, I started to gain weight a little at a time, and my cardiologist said, I think you'll be able to control your diabetes if you drop 10 pounds. Well, I overdid it, and I lost 23. Now I realize that I have to eat to maintain a weight and I need to gain about five pounds. If you would like to eat healthier, you can begin by taking small steps, making one change at a time. 
So what we recommend is to start very small with easy changes. For example, uh, drop the bedtime snack or change it to a healthy snack. We'd also encourage you to keep a health diary. Write down every day these behaviors that you change because the small changes can go together to add up to have real health impact. Making wise food choices now can help you stay healthy and independent in the years to come. I know that I'm getting older. It's a um, way of protecting uh, myself from having a lot of extreme problems as I get older. I want that life to be as nice. I'd like to run as long as I can and do sports as long as I can. This is why I shop at farmer's markets. Fresh, nutritious, delicious, and locally grown fruits and vegetables, and sound advice from people who really know good food. When I go to a farmer's market, I know I might come across the best greens or apples or peaches that I've ever had. What kind of advice do you think you would give people who have never shopped at a farmer's market before? Talk to the farmer behind the table. Ask them any question, they'll be glad to answer. Sweet bell peppers are an excellent source of vitamins A and C. Um, these deeply colored fruits and vegetables are a wonderful thing to incorporate into a healthy diet. To me, that makes food shopping here an adventure, and I'm not alone. Here I can get meat and eggs and fruit and vegetables. I can speak directly to the farmer. I can ask him or her questions about what they're doing and why. And we have a relationship. It gives us a greater connection with our environment, both the physical, natural environment, and our social, economic environment. There's something really incredible about knowing where your food is being sourced. So much of it is really the interpersonal connection. It's knowing who's growing your food and seeing the love and the energy and the attention that they've put into what you're tasting. Here, the produce is seasonal and picked at the peak of freshness. So you get to enjoy local fruits and vegetables when they're at their very best. I think everybody likes to shop in the markets because they can get a good value at the farmer's market and everything we have to offer is fresh. What's one of your favorite things about buying seasonal fruits and vegetables? Oh, the taste, definitely the taste. <laughs> the you taste. can taste the difference. And a lot of the guys will say, we just picked this, you know, last night. We were out picking, and I'm like, oh my god, this came right from your farm. It's great to know that what you're getting is, is fresh. You know it's going to be really, really good. And you know that you're directly supporting farmers. I think farmers markets are really fun. They're for everyone. Everybody can come and find something that they love and incorporate it into a new dish. For example, these Queen Rosa, these little plums, they're so cute and I've never seen these before. We'll have samples set up of melons and watermelons and kids get to try them and they really want them. Sometimes parents say, oh my child doesn't, and doesn't like beans and you hand them a freshly picked bean and they like it. I like basil, mint, sancho. Isabella, what about your bag? Oh, the pears, they look great. They're just coming into season. So I'll get a couple of those. That's what's great about the farmer's market as well, is it's exciting to find what's new and in season and fresh. I think that the best thing about eating seasonally is the anticipation. Like I'm waiting for the winter squash because I love to make winter squash soup and then eat it for breakfast. I just wait all year for those things. And then it becomes part of our natural rhythm. As somebody who's trying to become a better cook and cook a lot more, it's great to get in the habit of cooking things that are in season and that have traveled not very far. I think it's definitely changed my eating habits. In addition to the wonderful food, there are lots of other advantages to patronizing farmers markets. I like the personal service I get and the relationships I develop with the farmers and vendors. I also like the idea of supporting the local economy and local agriculture. The freshness and variety are beyond compare at a farmer's market, and the family farmers benefit from receiving a bigger profit from these markets. You can also use SNAP or WIC benefits to purchase foods at the farmer's market. What's your favorite thing about coming to the farmer's market with oh, your daughter? It, with her, it's because she does the shopping and basically it makes my life that much easier. Did you get one? Yeah. Mm. Those are really good, you're right. Those are very sweet.
it's fun to come out and experiment and definitely to talk to the farmer that they always have great recommendations for what to do with the food. They say we eat with our eyes and there's no better place to eat with your eyes than at a farmer's market. Not only can you find the fresh locally grown produce at farmers markets, but they're fun. It doesn't matter how old or young you are or how much you know about food, there's something here for everyone. And with farmers markets opening in many locations, it's easier than ever to find one, two or more in your area. In some regions, farmers markets are open year-round. In other regions, they're seasonal. Either way, you're bound to find an ever-changing selection of the freshest and most delicious items available. And farmers markets aren't the only way you can find fresh local foods. You can look for roadside stands or join a community-supported agriculture or CSA group in your area. Farmers Market is a place you can really get excited about good food. For more information about healthy eating and recipes, and to find a farmers market in your area, visit www.nutrition.gov. Welcome to the Our Hearts Cooking Demonstration. I'm Dr. Holly Nicastro, a nutrition scientist with the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, or NHLBI. And joining me today is Carlene Thomas, a registered dietitian nutritionist, a food photographer, and blogger. February is American Heart Month. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women in the United States. But the good news is it's largely pre preventable thanks to lifestyle choices like exercise, healthy eating, not smoking, and managing stress, just to name a few. And research shows that social support makes it easier for us to be heart healthy. Our hearts are healthier together. We can find social support at work, in our communities, and even online. This week, we're focusing on our hearts online. So thank you all for tuning in, and please let us know in the comments where you're joining us from. But speaking of online, websites are a great resource for free information and recipes on heart healthy uh, recipes. So Carlene shares heart healthy recipes on her blog, Oh Carlene. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. And as we talked about preventable, heart disease, heart disease is so preventable through what we eat. And so through things like fruit and vegetables and whole grains and a lot of the things that we're gonna be cooking with you guys today, you can make some extremely great heart healthy choices. So when I'm looking for inspiration on when I'm building my blog recipes or sharing on Instagram Live, I head online with all of you guys to see inspiration. And so through resources like NHLBI or what you guys send me in Instagram direct messages, I find some great inspiration for cooking healthy. Great. Now NHLBI recommends the DASH eating plan. DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. It emphasizes fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. It includes fish, poultry, beans, nuts, and healthy vegetable oils. It limits foods that are high in saturated fats, that would be fatty meats, full fat dairy, or tropical oils, and it limits sweets and sugar sweetened beverages. For a lot more information on the DASH diet, you can check out the NHLBI website, and we'll put that link in the comments. So Carlene, what are we cooking today? So we're making three things with you guys today, but we're gonna start off with dish number one, which we have here. This is our chicken picadillo, which we're calling a chickadillo recipe. And it starts with all one pot things. It's chicken and rice staples, which a lot of people have on hand. We wanted to pick something that was easy, one pot, and just staples. They're, they're easy to dress up multiple different ways. So for the recipe number one, in this one pan dish, we have a little bit of olive oil, some onion, two kinds of peppers for color, um, although you could easily add any yellow pepper if you wanted to do stoplight colors, um, as well as some chicken already going here. Okay, so now we're making the big changes. We started with the chicken and rice, which we'll add later, but Holly's gonna add in some of our ingredients here. We've got golden raisins, we have some ground cumin and bay leaves, make sure to remove the bay leaves later some lemon juice, low sodium chicken stock, no salt added tomato sauce, and a little bit of water. Great, so this recipe substitutes chicken for the beef that you normally find in picadillo recipes. So that helps keep it lower in saturated fat, which is good because saturated fat can raise levels of unhealthy blood cholesterol. 
and we're substituting some of that saturated fat from the beef with uh, heart healthy olive oil. And this chicken, um, this chicken dish is also a great way to add vegetables, which are a good source of vitamins and minerals like potassium, calcium, magnesium. So this, through the magic of Facebook Live, we're gonna cover and bring out the final dish. But what happens here is you cover it and let it simmer for 20 minutes. Really what you're just going for is for all the flavors to combine and for that chicken to get really nice and tender. So Holly's gonna go ahead and start chopping our cilantro while I switch out to a few other things. Now with the cilantro that Holly's chopping, fresh herbs are a great way to add a lot of flavor for those who are on a sodium conscious diet or for those who are looking to be a little bit more calorie conscious. Um, and in this pot, while Holly's chopping that, we're getting started on recipe number two, um, which just goes to show how much you can take those same staples, the chicken and the rice, and change it up. Okay, so while that's heating, we're also gonna get started with our beans. Great. So beans are a great source of fiber, great source of the minerals we were mentioning earlier, and I found that they're also kid-friendly. I know if I make something with beans, my kids will eat it no matter what it is. Okay, so to those black beans, which we rinsed and drain, and that's that great way to reduce the sodium. A simple rinse and drain is a great way to reduce it by up to 30%. Just a great. simple change. Let me get your cilantro. Okay. There you go. Perfect. And this is just our quick side salad that we're throwing together for a little bit more color and texture. So with our final dish, Holly's gonna help me garnish this while I plate up our beans and mango salad. So here are the toppings that Holly's working with. We've got some green olives and a little bit of caper. Okay, so this chicken picadillo, like we said, if you're just joining us, it's a healthy one pot dish full of vegetables, low in sodium and very delicious. You're not missing out on any of the flavor here. Mm -hmm. So a little bowl of that. Great. Okay, so are we ready to move on to dish number two? I think so, what's number two? Okay, so here's the great thing about dish number two. You saw how easy it was to throw together dish number one with chicken and rice. So we're taking it a little bit more veggie heavy and some different kinds of starter things. So in, again, our one pot meal, we're going to use that leftover chicken and rice. And leftovers are a great way to reduce stress because the chicken and the rice is already done. You know, you're reducing food waste, you're saving some time so you can do some more heart healthy activities. Um, so in this pot, we've got a little bit of garlic and ginger, scallions, water chestnuts, and that chicken I went ahead and started with. So Holly, if you wanna go ahead and add our two extra add-ins, we've got our stir fried veggies, and you can use frozen. Don't feel like you have to use fresh. Frozen is a great thing to have in your kitchen, in your pantry, in your freezer, because it doesn't go bad. It's there when you need it. And also that brown rice. Great, so brown rice instead of white rice means you're getting a lot more fiber. And a key component of the DASH eating plan is that it's low in sodium. So this recipe helps to achieve that by using light or low sodium soy sauce instead of the full sodium soy sauce. Um, and what's great about DASH as well, you can change it up to fit with your dietary restrictions. So if you wanted to make this dish vegetarian, you easily could. You could just omit the chicken or you could substitute it with your favorite meat substitute or even beans. That sounds so good. And so with this sauce that we're putting in, um, like Holly said, we've got a little bit of that light soy sauce and we also have some sesame oil. Sesame oil, if you've ever smelled it, super fragrant. It's a great way to add a ton of flavor while being really conscious of sodium and calories. And cooking this dish, it's really a great opportunity to invite a family member to come join you in the kitchen. So please let us know in the comments who's your favorite person to cook with. I know I love when my husband and my kids join me. Yes, my husband is also a great cook. <laughs> I always like him in the kitchen with me. So with our wiki rice, which is what we're calling dish number two, it is really a good look at leftovers, the chicken, the brown rice, the stock veggies you have in your freezer or fresh. And we're gonna garnish it with a little bit of that green onion that we started with and a little bit of sesame seeds. Right, now adding these toppings, it's a great way to personalize this. Mm -hmm. I know at home, um, my five-year-old son, he loves to tear up and add um, basil to his own yeah. dishes to make it his own. So with this dish, like you said, the basil, you could easily add a little Thai basil if you wanted to, or you could add some other fresh produce on top, but really the personalization of having 
toppings like this is it makes it fun for everyone. Everybody gets to be really involved in the kitchen. Everybody gets to take their own take on it. And like you said, your, your kid and your husband have their personalized things. My husband likes spicy. No thanks on the spicy mm -hmm. for me, but you could also add a spicy topping to this if you wanted to. Right, so this was dish number two, our wiki rice. Look how fast that was. High in fiber, high in vitamins and minerals, low in sodium, heart healthy. Definitely, and a great weeknight recipe. So also, if you're just tuning in, we wanna know in the comments what your favorite weeknight dish is, because I would love to know for when I get home tonight. Right. So what about dessert? <laughs> <laughs> we never wanna miss out on things like dessert. Now, when you saw in dish number one, we used that mango in a side salad, but here's your opportunity to take advantage of being a little budget conscious. So when you see fruit that is a great deal um, at your farmer's market or in your grocery store, you can go ahead and buy it, cut it up, freeze it flat on a tray, and then bag it so those little pieces don't stick together. So in our mango smoothie today, um, we have a little bit of low-fat milk, some banana, mango, and also a little bit of ice. But the nice thing about this is it's really easy to change because you can always add something like raspberry to it or strawberry or even going back to those fresh herbs, some mint. Great, and we'll be putting the links to all of these recipes in the comments below. But if you're a dessert person, fruit is an excellent way to satisfy the sweet tooth at the end of the meal. So consider substituting some of your more traditional desserts for fruit salad or fruit smoothies just like this. Mm -hmm. So this is just a great example, again, of three really easy things you can do that are health conscious. We know those lifestyle changes, making decisions with your diet. It's an easy way to reduce your risk for developing heart disease. So we've got the whole grains, the lean protein, the fruits, the vegetables, and all of those can help combine along with being with your favorite people and the social support you can find online, like with NHLBI or Instagram or wherever it is, to do some positive changes. Great. Well, thank you all for joining us today. I know our hearts are already feeling healthier thanks to these recipes and from the social support of cooking together and having you all join us. Uh, you can find social support anywhere, at work, at home, even online. Throughout the month of February, let us know what you're doing to stay heart healthy. Post on social media and use the hashtag Our Hearts. For more information on American Heart Month, heart disease, or our hearts, you can check out the NHLBI website, link will be below in the comments for a wealth of information. You can also follow The Heart Truth and NHLBI on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you again for joining us today. We hope you learned something new. Thank you to Carlene. Have a great heart healthy day, everybody. Bye.